What well, going on guys, it's your boy Jack, aka the Bald and Refat, coming at you today's video, which is part two of the all Japanese Koi Spawn. Uh, I've got the troops with me, uh, and by troops, I do indeed mean Danger Mouse. Um, this video is going to be running a little bit different. So, we're going to be going through the full setup guide, what we're actually going to be doing to get these guys ready to actually take some uh, food on board uh, and what the sort of next steps and what the next uh, processes actually are. Uh, and I am indeed going to be using the whiteboard so I can drop this down step by step so you guys can follow along at home. Um, if this kind of content interests you, do me a few moments favour please and swipe up. Around here you're going to see my subscribe button. If you hit that and hit the all bell notification, you'll be able to follow this full spawn series along completely free of charge as well as all my other videos. We're getting really, really close now to getting to 4,000 subscribers and we have got the big 4,000 giveaway as well. Do not forget. Check out um, reeforproducts.com for the big giveaway and how to enter. Uh, I'm here with the troops. We've got Dazzy's Koi Farm. We've got Gazzy's um, Koi Pond. And we've got Sticky Mickey, aka Slim Mick, aka Mick Lawson. <laughs> um, so Mick has indeed brought his microscope over. Um, and I've got Dazzy's Koi Farm here. So an industry renowned expert at breeding. <laughs> May I have you know all that. Uh, come slide over, pop it. I don't smell too much. Um, so what have we just done? We've just been looking at some of the eggs from yesterday's spawning just to see if we've got um, any idea whether they're fertile or not. And they look pretty good anyway because they're, they're clear, they're, they're transparent and um, they're just starting to get a little bit greeny which is the embryo developing inside. If they go white and then they start to get fluffy, that's bad news. When they're clear and they start to go a bit, bit of a greenish tinge, that's, that's good news. And um, we've just been looking at them through the microscope and we can see the embryo inside um, sure. the main body of the embryo, but it looks like the tail started to develop as it wraps around, so it, it's good news. I put four random eggs on there and they're all fertile. So, oh, so a good one. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to end this segment here because I'm actually going to try and show you a look down the microscope so you guys can actually see what these look like. Now, as each day goes on, um, Mick has got me a a sterilised plastic cup. I'm going to put some uh, pond water in here um, from the fry tank. I'm actually going to leave all four eggs in here as well. So each day um, we're actually going to snap back at exactly the same time. So the time is now 10.03. So every day at 10 o'clock uh, I'll come down to the sort PM, that is mine, um, just so we can see what the development stages of these are. We pretty much started setting this up yesterday about 10 o'clock anyway. So within 24 hours, and bear in mind, we've picked the spawn bushes out. You guys have already all, will also have seen a little bit of a, a thumbnail. Now on the thumbnail, you can see me standing in the window. What we're actually doing is you were using the bottom of the bottom drain yeah. as like a hoover. I was billowing the water out the window to make a faster water change, and we actually had a net, and we were billowing the eggs into there. How many eggs did you take from the main fry pool? No, no, have just for oh, this sorry. side. Um, three. Three, and you took Plus another egg. Just one out of your main um, egg pool. Yeah, so have you got an egg at the fry tank yet? Uh, yeah, I took, I took three out of the fry tank and one out. Well, which one are you referring to the fry tank? So this is the fry tank? Yeah. One out of the fry tank and three out the fish tank. Fish tank. Okay, so the ones that we got in the net, we're actually putting it into the fish tank. Now, bear in mind, these have been ripped through a bottom drain, gone through the propeller, up nearly three meters worth of tubing out the window into a net and these eggs have still survived just to show you guys it is possible eggs are a lot more resistant than you think i actually ate one last night it just tastes of water um but yeah <laughs> there you go I'm, you're not a true fish breed if you don't eat your own fish eggs you know what i mean it was david coy bloke's fault he texted me saying um can i order some rowan chips please <laughs> winding me up as he was still spawning Cheers, David. Anyway, enough of me waffling. Let me spin the camera around and stick it through the eye of this. Let's go. Okay, so this is the end of day one. You can see the embryotic stage there. Bear with me. Very difficult to do one-handed. So you can see the embryo of the egg just there. Inside of the actual egg itself. And where you can see that black line coming, this is what we think is the tail. 
So let me snap back to you tomorrow when it's day two. Okay, so this is day two. So you can now see the body actually beginning to form with a little bit of a heartbeat there pulsing through. So I don't think it's gonna to be too long before we're actually gonna to start to see some of these free swimming. So I reckon by sort of day three slash day four, this is 10 p.m. day two. I'm probably gonna check these at about midday tomorrow just to sort of see what they look like. And then again, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm probably gonna check at 10 p.m. tomorrow night. And then bet by around Tuesday, we'll have a load of these that are going to be free swimming. Okay, so today is Tuesday. Um, this actually got two water changes done yesterday. It's back sitting around 21 degrees now. Uh, the reason why I've done two water changes on this is to actually bring out uh, the blue methylene that you can see in there, but obviously we can now see right the way down to the bottom. So you're gonna have another 90% water change on it today, and then re-top back up with a mixture of hot and cold. Uh, the parent stock are doing really, really well. Um, bulled off the easy pod, uh, and I'm just getting back to the uh, the good water clarity that we had previously, but we are getting there. Um, as you've seen uh, so far, you've seen days one, two, and three. Uh, let me snap back to you in a second once I'm actually putting some more of these eggs underneath the scope, and we can have a look at what they look like day four. But I'm estimating that these are gonna be hatching any time between now and Friday. Um, so need to get the branch room hatchery up on the wall, so I need to get that ordered today as well, so I can actually start that cultivation. But I'll snap back to you in a second once we've got day four underneath the microscope. Let's go. Okay, so today is Wednesday. If you look at the end of the pointer, you'll see the tail begin to flicker over so occasionally. But these guys, there you go. These guys here are imminently about to, uh, to burst through the sack. The strip that you can actually see through the middle that's the egg sack. So it'll come out with the egg sack still attached. But we're packing on size. So what I'm in the process of doing now, let me put these eggs back in the water first. What I'm in the process of doing now is just dropping the water volume down on here. So this will be the uh, fourth water change this has had. I'm going to drop this now 95% of the way down. I'm then going to fill it back up to about eight inches in depth because when these guys burst through the sack they have to come up to the top of the water take a gulp full of air which in turn sets the swim bladder then they'll go back down and they'll sit on the bottom for two or three days they will actually be eating the egg sack and then after that we'll then bring them up for some uh, for some food but the bubblers are going away and bubbling nicely um, I'm about to call Daz to see how his eggs are getting on. I'm about to call Danny's Koi Pond as well. Sorry, Danny's Koi Channel uh, to see how his eggs are getting on. Because like I say, uh, these guys are absolutely motoring long. When I am doing the water change on these, all I'm doing is to make sure all the eggs are staying fully submerged. Is I am just moving around these spawn brushes to make sure they are uh, always kept underwater. Obviously, you're always going to get a little bit of a peak at the top like that. But as long as the majority of them are underwater, don't forget... There is also thousands upon thousands of eggs in the bottom. Uh, and I am still checking back into here on a day-to-day -day basis. Oh, we've got one's free swimming. So we actually have one's free swimming. There's a free swimming one in there. You might not be able to pick it up, but there is definitely, definitely free swimmers in there. All still on the bottom as well. So we do have free swimmers in here. Uh, this one on here... I find if you give the glass just a gentle tap, you will see some of them coming out. This one's a bit of an experiment tank with it being, um, having sand in the bottom. So you wanna see if it'll still hatch. But there are definitely some free swimmers in here. That's absolutely insane. Let me sit on the floor and see if I can actually get you some content of these guys free swimming. Right, let me keep looking. 
There you go. Corner of the glass right there. See him stuck to the glass? Smack bang in the centre of the screen. See him moving round? So it's official. We have our first hatch lock come out, which is absolutely brilliant. So we'll see how long these guys keep going for. I've just got a gentle bubbler in there at the moment. Like I say, these guys are going to be on their egg sacks for the next sort of two to three days. But I urgently now need to go ahead and set up that branching factory. So we go ahead and grab that. And we'll get that installed so we can actually get these guys on some food within the next three days. Let's go! Okay, so you've just seen all the ones on the glass. Let me spin you around and show you the back of it because there's literally thousands in the tank. So all these little white slits that you see all the way down, all these are the ones that have actually hatched off. There is literally racks upon racks of them. What I'm doing at the minute is I've got a very fine uh, mesh net over the siphon that I'm siphoning out. But then what I've also done is I've just dragged the cup down the side of one of the spawn brushes and there is actually a, uh, a fry in here. Let me just move him around a sec. There is actually one uh, turbo in round, but I'll just there he is in the middle at the bottom. So if you guys keep watching that, see him turboing round again then? Just move that water up a little bit, just get him to re come back out. All I've done is I've got this cup, I just went along inside the spoon brushes like this and just literally gently pulled it across, scoop it up and see if we've, uh, we've actually got one in there. So yeah, we've got another one in here. So you see it there, rigging around, zooming around at the bottom. There's one at the top of the cup as well. So again, these, these guys have literally been out the sacks for only a matter of a couple of hours. I mean, you've just seen today on some of the eggs where you can see them starting to pop out. But looking absolutely fantastic. So, the first stage feed that I'm going to do is actually on the boiled egg yolk uh, through a mesh bag into a watering can. Um, but we're not going to be due to feed them until, I mean, today's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Probably Friday night slash Saturday morning will be the first time these guys have a spawn. I am going to put some activated carbon in here as well, which in turn will suck out some of that methylene blue uh, that is in the water. Uh, and then I'm actually going to do a warm water change on these to really bring them up to temperature. Uh, like I say, once we start feeding these guys, it'll be little and often. So these guys will be getting fed sort of eight, nine times a day on the powdered egg yolk. Um, just to really set that, um, that gullet, that dietary retract inside of them, uh, which is what we need. Once they get to sort of three, four days old, so literally by Sunday, um, when the three, four days are free swimming uh, and they're getting the black coloration on them, we're then actually going to hand grade out individually on an individual basis uh, for any of the black ones, because there's your Sankeys, your Showers and things like that. The reason you do that is your Sankeys and Showers don't compete for food as well as your other fish do. Anything that's white or silver, um, those are going to be the biggest ones that are going to be going up for the food straight away. Um, but the lake's all set, uh, just need to check the temperatures on them, um, which again has been done on a different video, uh, that's a dedicated lake video. So yeah, let me carry on dropping this bad boy right down. I am probably going to lose some through the net, obviously that's not to be, I can't really help that situation. But like I say, there's enough in these two tanks and this here to see us through. There's still thousands upon thousands upon thousands of eggs inside of these spawn brushes. So I'm not particularly um, worried about losing massive quantities or anything like that. We've probably got in the region of about really 2 million eggs on these. It's ridiculous. Not saying they're all gonna, not saying they're all gonna become viable, not saying they're all gonna hatch or anything like that before the internet starts going crazy with me. But there's a very, very dense stocking level uh, of fish in here. And like I say, this is the first day. Uh, this is where the timing is crucial uh, with temperatures, water parameters and things like that. Uh, we're setting up a very small pump and a, and a small pressurised filter as well uh, which I'll be snapping back to you guys whilst I'm doing that on this video too so when they do become free swimming the filter's matured it's set up it's on there that one there on there at the minute running so like I say watch this space on that one but yeah super happy at the moment um, need to go ahead like I say finish this water change off 
um, put some activated carbon in, like I say, get the methylene blue out the water. And then, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to show you guys what these guys look like on camera. Uh, so yeah, it's looking good. Fantastic spawn so far. The more I'm looking, the more that I'm seeing. Like I say, they've been hatching out now for three, four hours. Um, so yeah, all we can do is keep on keeping on, but I'll snap back to you in a second once I've got the filtration set up and once I've got a lot more blue out of this water. Let's go. Okay, so just finishing up the water change at the minute and I just thought I'd show you what I can see. So, as you can see, if I uh, give the spawn brush a bit of a tug, you'll literally see all the fry come whizzing on out. Uh, so the water change has been done, we're now sat at uh, 21 degrees. We're going to leave these guys off food for the next three days. So the reason we're leaving them off food is simply due to the fact that <coughs> we want them to get rid of that egg, so egg yolk sack or sort of not egg yolk sack sorry we want them to get rid of the egg sack first what the egg sack is is that the where you've got the koi like that you'd have a little bit of a sack on the bottom of it and that's still some of the um amniotic fluid like the embryo fluid that they're still uh, actually eating and that'll be their sort of first course of food there's actually a green water bat set up already down the farm um, which i'm actually going to be moving a hell of a lot of these guys into um, to give them that first sort of week's bit of food um, to really start to get them to sort of condition up and that side of things. Uh, it's going to be a hella, hella busy weekend with these guys. Um, like I say, I'm uh, in the process of setting up the branch and hatchery, but I just thought I'd quickly show you that little bit of a sneak peek there. So let me go ahead, finish off water changing this up, and then I'll show you how we actually make the egg uh, for the first feed on these guys. Let's go. Okay, so as promised, uh, I'll show you some more of the fry. As you can see, they're all starting to colour up a lovely jubbly now. Uh, there are literally reams upon reams upon reams of fish in here. Now, what we're doing is I have cut off the top of a bottle. Uh, I'm going ahead and I'm getting some water out of the tank. Trying to fill that up as much as possible. Doesn't really matter if I get any uh, fish inside of here. Then what I'm doing is I'm getting my egg yolk and I'm just letting it soak in the net like so. Then, obviously it's very difficult to do one-handed, I'm actually smushing the egg like so. So you see it pulsing and milking all up into the water. And I'm doing that until I've got nothing left of the egg. So let me go ahead, pulse this down to literally nothing and I'll snap back to you in a second. Okay, so that is now the egg yolk all in that water. Obviously my water does still have a little bit of methylene blue in it, but all I'm doing now is going ahead and dispersing that liquid amongst the fish. And as you'll see, they literally dive on straight on into it. And then it's just a matter of continuously pouring this over. These guys are on about seven to eight feeds of the egg yolk per day at the moment so that's the first that's the third one uh no sorry that's not the third one uh it's later than that in the day this is actually the fifth feed that these guys have had today like i say between seven and eight feeds i'll get another one a little bit later on with the egg yolk you do need to make sure it's done fresh on the day you can't really be waiting around and doing a batch load of boiled up eggs or anything like that i boil mine literally on nukem for 10 minutes uh on a full boil uh, that way I can make sure that that egg yolk is dense and hard. Um, you need to obviously make sure it is as fresh as possible. Sorry, I'm just getting distracted by watching these. Let me spin you around. You need to make sure your egg yolk is literally as fresh as humanly possible. Um, and like I say, just try and give it that even disbursement around the pond for these guys to be able to feed. Don't be alarmed if all of your fish go yellow because whatever they eat in the early stages, it fills the gut up. And like I say, they will go whatever colour the food that you have put in. Now, the I think there's two lots of spawn left now on these. Um, then once they're gone, they're gone. They'll be ready to collect inside the next two weeks. Dazzy's Koi Channel, um, oh sorry, Dazzy's Koi Farm is taking half of these. The other half are going to be going up the lake in the next couple of days. In the meantime though, what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and build a filter system for them next. So let me snap back to you in a second 
once I've got all the bits and pieces laid out and I've got my phone in the, phone in the tripod, I can show you exactly how I'm going to do that. So I know this is technically nothing to do with Fry, but old bitch the carpet man's back. He's got his sexy shades on as well. We've got the GKP and the Hizos. How's it going? Uh, we're having Astro to fit in the shop. So I just kind of figured there's going to be no fish room Thursday this week. So we'll just add it to the fry one. So yeah, let me snap back to you in a second. Once I've got all my Astro turf down, and I promise I will actually get round to building that filter that I've been telling you I'm going to do now for three days. Snap back to you in a second. Woo! So the Astro turf is in. Sofa's got to go. Uh, what we've done is we've put a little bit of a joint down the side there for the time being, so when the pool's actually moved on Saturday and we put a smaller vat in there, we can then re-roll the AstroTurf back down. Uh, give you a little bit more of a sneak peek of the fry. These have had uh, another three or four feeds today, and there's literally rafters upon rafters upon rafters of fish. Uh, the more you look, the more you move around, the more fish appear. Uh, get super happy and super healthy. Loving the AstroTurf look though. Hit me up in the comments down below, what do you think? Now, I know I've been promising to build a filter. However, I'm actually saving that for part three. Dancy's Koi Farm's taking half of these. There is then gonna be a quarter that's left going up the Koi Farm. The other quarter are gonna be raised on in this pool, indoors, so you guys that are following a spawn on at home can also follow the same sort of process. Now, what I am doing is I am testing the water in here daily because of the amount of food going in. What I'm doing is a trickle out through an air stone, so I'm connecting an air stone on, uh, airline down into the drain, and I'm literally leaving that running um, across four or five air stones for literally six, seven hours, uh, and then I'm literally topping it back up. So it works out to about 10, 15% water change daily that these guys are getting. Um, they're still a little bit small for me wanting to put the filter on, um, I'm testing the water, the water's reading absolutely fine, but I'm still doing the water changes anyway, because as these guys start to pack on, blinking half a million fish pooping is soon gonna <whistles> spin that ammonia level round. So yeah, watch this space on that one, gonna build the filtration unit on the next video. Um, but for the time being folks, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, a, at the Balding Reefer, Instagram slightly different, at the dot balding dot reefer, any of your website needs, reefbroaquatics.com um, but other than that stay safe stay sane but most importantly people stay happy balding reefer out <laughs>